Good morning, viewers. Um, today we have Mr. Ramesh Mantri, who is Chief Investment Officer of uh, you know equities in Oito Capital Mutual Fund, and he he has joined us. Ramesh, to give a brief intro about uh, Mr. Ramesh, he is a founding member of Oito Capital Investment Team. He has over 19 years of experience in the investment field. Earlier, he founded Ashoka Capital Advisors that advised a fund and family offices on equity investments in South Asia. He was also part of a two-member team there, which invested in South Asia in equity and debt for Alden Global Capital, a US-based hedge fund for over seven years. Earlier to that, he was an analyst with Crystal, one of the top rating agencies. You know, they are there world over. India's leading rating agency and covered the financial sector. Uh, Ramesh is an MBA, CFA, and CA. So he has all the qualifications a financial person can have. And uh, today, Oito Capital Mutual Fund, you know, uh, came into existence 18 months ago. But Oito Capital Mutual Fund is part of Oito Capital Group. They are a global company. It's a globally trusted asset management group. The founder is Mr. Prashant Kemka. He's an investment professional with, uh, you know, wide experience, vast experience in USA for over two decades. The group has investment research teams based in India, Singapore, Spain, and additional sales and distribution offices in Switzerland, UAE, and UK. Today, in the mutual fund alone, they manage more than 9,500 crores of assets in the, just in the last 18 months. And, you know, other than that, they do have their own, you know, overseas fund management and all those things. They are there much earlier as well. So, welcome, Ramesh. Thank you, sir. Good morning to all the viewers. Yeah, glad to have you on our channel. And uh, I'm pretty sure that, you know, your insights will immensely help our subscribers. No. Yeah, one thing yeah. I just want to re-emphasize here that uh, White Oak Group, it sounds like a global group, but we are an Indian multinational. We are an Indian company out of based out of Bombay that has gone global. So okay. the we are the reverse of global multinationals. Very good. Very one good. of those rare companies out of India that is global going global, just like Indian IT services and pharma companies have gone. So that is the difference. Very good, very good. Yeah, as, as, as it sounds, White Oak means like Pine Bridge. White Oak, it means it's like a US company or something like that. But that's good that, you know, you clarified that you are, a, you know, very much Indian company, Indian promoted company, and however you are operating worldwide. Right now, Ramesh, I mean, there is a lot of things going on in the Indian economy, in the, you know, worldwide. You know, I hear that too. Now, many countries, 30-40% of the countries are into election mode in this 2024. How do you view the current you know, equity market scenario in India? So one, of course, uh, you know, we have the elections clearly in front of us. That is one event. We have to get over with it. Uh, it is, I don't think elections are a big deal. Anyway, the uncertainty has re reduced now with the election outcomes. And even over a longer team, term, people worry and give credit to politicians too much, right? I, I'll give you an example from 2009, you know, 1989 to 2019, 30 straight years, we had coalition governments in this country. You know, after Rajiv Gandhi, we had VP Singh, Chandrasekhar, P.V. Nasimarao's government, Deva Goda, I.K. Gujral, Vajpayee, Manmohan Singh, UPA1, UPA2, and then even the Narendra Modi ji's first term. All the 30 years we had coalition governments and coalition partners were all over the country, you know, all kinds of parties. Over that 30 year period, we had multiple economic financial crisis. Mm -hmm. We had oil prices going up $150. We had seen oil at $5. We had so many wars in the world. We had our own terrorist attacks in, you know, in Bombay, in Delhi, parts of India. Through these 30 years, despite all the chaos, political chaos, economic chaos, the country has done exceedingly well. And equity markets have done, equity markets ultimately reflect the underlying economy of the country. So 
over a very long period, despite everything that has happened in the last 30 years, we have done exceedingly well. And any of those parameters today, whether our politics, whether you know the strength of our Indian economy, whether now we have some great industries where we are globally competitive, whether it is IT or pharma, we are better positioned than what we have been when we started this journey of reforms. You know, yeah. 35 years, you know, yeah. So I think there's very little to worry. It is like, I would say, uh, you know, to give a sports analogy, it's a match we are going to lose if we score a self goal. It is our match to lose. You know, I, and I used to play in school, my coach used to always say, the best way to win a match is not to score a self goal. <laughs> yeah, let the other team score the self goal. So that is what it is. Okay, okay. So in in that way, so if, uh, why I put this question is you know the you know people are worried about you know some people not all you know uh, of course there is buoyancy in the market everything that is going on that is another headache. So however there is you know a part of the people are worried how it will be post election you know whether the market will boom or pre election it is dull. So people are waiting on the sidelines, investors. It could be like foreign investors, foreign institution investors, or you know, even local investors, some HNA investors, or some retail investors. Sometimes you know, there are regulator intervention also. All those things are there. So now that's why I put this question generally. You know, for, for, will are people waiting to invest? I think very clearly, not in India, but abroad, they are waiting for the selection to get over. So we have, because see, Vito Group happens to be one of the largest FPIs into the country, about $4 billion. So, you know, for global investors, whether in North America, Europe, Asia, whether it is sovereign wealth funds, endowments, universities, private banks, global family offices, we are the go-to partner to invest in India. So we have had many conversations. People say, I want to come and meet you in June. If people are planning a visit in June, that tells you that they want to get the elections to be done. They just want to wait for that you know, certainty of election, you know, right? So at least I, I, India, I'm less sure of what people's positions are, but globally, a lot of people are waiting for the elections to get over in India. And they want to see that there's a clear political certainty for the next five years. And uh, other thing is, otherwise the country itself is on a very strong wicket, you know? So they just want, you know, uh, what do, I, would, I would say, Bumrah's over to get over. The, the next two months, right? And then you can you you can go after every other baller after that. Correct, correct. True, true. So, that is, uh, although foreign investors are waiting, because anyone, you know, there is another one month away or two months away, why to bother, why to enter now? Let, let me get a clear picture. And then even if the market little bit goes up, that's fine, we will enter. Or goes up or goes down, whichever is. No, it doesn't matter. So, that is very clear thing. And... How do you, you know, want or see, want to see the retail investors keep their mindset at this point of time? Because uh, although the HNA investors and the foreign institution investors, they have more clarity on what they are going to do. Retail investors, always, particularly new investors, not the old investors, um, the younger ones are do-it-yourself people. Uh, they, they, they keep, you know, their mind keeps oscillating uh, to put money, take out money, you know, immediate. What would you like to say to them? See, uh, at, you know, at the end of day, first, long-term wealth creation requires years of commitment and patience. There are no short-term miracles. So none of us can predict what is going to happen in the next few months or a year. And there's no easy way to make money. And even compounding, even at 12% for a long time, ends up being a lot of money. That's a very simple thing. I think, sir... You know, when I go back 15 years ago and today, there's a huge difference in how retail investors invest. You know, 15 years ago, people used to directly invest in a stock. Today, of course, people directly invest in a stock. Uh, but I think a huge amount of money comes through mutual funds and particularly through SIPs. So for unless you can devote, remember, uh, you know, what professional fund managers do is their full-time job, right? So as if you think you can devote that kind of expertise and time to do it yourself. Otherwise, the best way is to invest through mutual funds. And there is one, you know, in markets, the most thing that impacts investors is volatility. You know, 
the problem with the long term equity return is it comes it is like a it, it is a volatile right it is a it is like a road in india with potholes right mm -hmm. you know like our bombay roads in Bo roads in bombay how much money we have we still have potholes so you have to be prepared for those bumps now that is the most difficult part of investing in equities but there is a brilliant solution around that problem and that brilliant solution is sip the beauty of sip is it makes the investment decision automatic you don't have to think about it it takes away your decision making from you and secondly if markets are slightly lower you get more value see we indians are very interesting we're very smart value shoppers you whether it's a sale on grocery or on your favorite you know clothes brand you know we will go and buy then you know we'll smartly wait for the sale but incidentally people don't do it with uh, equities <laughs> or investments we don't wait we get frightened in a sale that happens the way to take out that behavioral part or the psychological pain is sip so sip is a beautiful solution to the inherent volatility next time if a market corrects by 10% remember what you like to buy what you want to buy for next next 10 20 years is available on 10% discount don't stop buying that and if you have courage buy more right okay okay good so uh, that is a good thing huh? so i mean uh, if, if they continue keeping it, nowadays as we see the sap books have also crossed 18000 crore 19000 crore etc cetera, etc cetera. so i mean more retail investors are coming into that bandwagon Know, most of the retail investors are coming in. And today, you know, we are seeing SIPs to the tune of, you know, large and very large ticket. Some people are putting 5 lakh, 10 lakh, 20 lakh. You now, there are people who invest 100 rupees, 1000 rupees. And also, there are people, you know, who are wealthier. Who are wealthier, they, they take that plunge of doing 10 lakh, 20 lakh SIP also. So, that extent, you know, the market is matured or investors are matured, retail investors, even retail investors are matured. I agree with you. That is that. And I mean, if you do have a mid cap fund, you know, so uh, the one question is because of the regulatory intervention and maybe chairman, uh, chairperson, uh, you know, right now, sometime before they coming out and asking, you know, mutual fund houses to formulate policy because the smaller mid cap is overvalued, et cetera, et cetera. So you do have a mid cap fund. How do you see, what is your take uh, on that mid-cap fund? Uh, how do you want investors to go towards that mid-cap fund at this point of time? No. So one, of course, uh, you know, the regulator uh, has the right. See, one of the things the industry in the last 25 years has become so credible and so, you know, widespread. And the fact that the prime minister now constantly acknowledges the, you know, the growth of the mutual fund industries by the work the regulator has done to protect the investor, right, over the long period. Everything they've done. So in the last 12 months, we have seen huge flows into uh, mid-cap and small-cap funds. And some of these funds have grown very large in size. So the regulator, in the right mind, wanted to make sure that there's adequate liquidity available in case there is some volatility in markets, right? So they've asked funds to be mindful of that. Now, coming to the mid-cap category, as we speak, the mid-cap, the small cap is more, is really the overheated space within the two categories. The mid-cap is reasonably fine as we speak. It is slightly expensive, but not the kind of overheating that you are seeing in small cap. Now, the way I think about is the mid-cap and the small cap categories represent the future and growth of India. Let me explain this. See, companies become large cap when they become large and mature, right? So think of uh, Infosys in the 90s. Was it a large cap company? No, it was a small cap or a mid cap company, right? Now, of course, in the last, then it grew so well, the IT sector, that they have become large cap companies. So a lot of high growth sectors, sunrise sectors, early stage sectors, the companies tend to be in the small cap and the mid cap. Let me give you an example. Five, one of the booming industries and something we see around the Chennai also is the electronics manufacturing. Chennai happens to be one of the electronics manufacturing hub, right, in India, apart from Noida. 
Now you've seen this last five years, huge growth in mobile phone exports, electronics manufacturing. Now this industry is growing at a very rapid pace, but there was hardly any listed company in the market five years ago. Now, of course, multiple companies have gone public. Even today, there's not a single large cap company in that space. All mm -hmm. companies are, you know, uh, what do you call small cap or mid cap. Similarly, defense has started doing well in the last three years, except the PSUs. Uh, you know, all the defense companies, uh, you know, tend to be small caps or mid caps. And, and by the way, Chennai is uh, again, Bangalore and Chennai happen, Hyderabad tends to be also the hub of, uh, you know, you know, defense manufacturing in India. Yeah. So you are seeing a lot of sunrise sectors, growth opportunities. And I can give another example, hospitals. Now, yeah, five years ago, there were only two reasonably sized hospitals listed in India. Right. And now we can say there's a you know basket of hospital companies listed in India. You know, if you want to invest in a childcare company, you can invest. If you want to invest just in an oncology hospital, you can invest. If you want to invest only in a premium hospital, you can invest. If you want to invest in a value hospital, you can invest. And we know longer term people forget medical services is bigger than pharma, you know. So again, this sector is doing well, but more companies have gone public. So a lot of new growth opportunities, all this manufacturing, China plus one, these companies tend to be in the small cap and mid cap. And that is why it is critical for most investors who are taking a long-term view of India to have exposure in small cap and mid cap. Other advantage of small cap and mid cap is these are inefficient places. Let me give a cricket analogy. See, large cap investing is playing test cricket in Australia, England, or New Zealand. The Indian team has to be very good then to even win a series there. Mid cap investing is these teams, these three teams playing in India. We all almost always win the series, right? Small cap investing is any other team playing with us anywhere in the world, right? After apart from these three teams. So, you know, logically. If you are smart and want to improve your average as a fund manager, we don't want to play too much test cricket in England, Australia, and New Zealand. We yeah. want those teams to come and play here. So it's very natural that we can create a lot more alpha in the mid cap and the small cap space. So really? as we speak today, I would say even the mid cap space is slightly overvalued. The best way to invest is to invest through an SIP in the mid cap space also. I would not advise lump sum investment at this point of time. At White Oak, we are still very gung ho about this space uh, for a very different reason. Uh, the reason is because we have tremendous research capabilities. For us, this is like our home ground. See, Chipak is normally a difficult pitch, but not for Chennai, not for CSK. <laughs> so for us, it is a home ground, you know, mid cap and small cap. So despite that pitch being difficult for a lot of other people, it is for us a home ground. And that is why uh, even in this market, we would say, please do invest through SIP. Good, good. Now, when you mentioned these electronic and uh, you know, defense companies, for the last two months, I'm seeing full page ad in uh, you know Economic Times or Business Standard, all these financial magazines, Namkeen companies. Rajasthan Namkin companies, every day I'm seeing one company is coming and IPO. I don't know, are there so many companies, Namkin companies to come out in, you know? Very, very great question. Very good question. Actually, what has happened is, sir, and, and, and just to give you context to all the viewers, you know, I, uh, you know, I was born in Rajasthan myself. Uh, did my schooling in Vishakhapatnam, even 10 plus 2. Did my CA in Calcutta. And then studied in Delhi and came to work in Bombay. So I happened to see, and by the way, I stayed for months in Chennai in my audit days, in my CA audit days. I'm talking of 99, 2000 uh, in, the, in, in the summer, right? So I realized that every part of India has its ethnic food, including in snacks, right? So, and at the same time, India is going global. So, uh, you know, we are cross-pollinating our food across cultures. You know, I still remember 20 years ago when I used to come to even Chennai or Bangalore, it was difficult to find good North Indian food, right? In Rajasthan, you could never hear of Italy or dosa. Today, even in a small place in Rajasthan for breakfast, I get Italy or dosa. 
<laughs> right? Uh, and I, I, I may, by the way, just today morning I had Italy. So <laughs> for breakfast. <laughs> Right. So we and so and, and and today the South Indians also want to eat the pani puri and the right. So there's a huge. Yeah. So the markets are becoming national, and there are we have huge consumption of all these uh, you know savories and snacking items and all, and these brands are going national. I'll give very interesting data point. Eight hundred new players, small players, come into the ethnic snacks market every year in India. Oh. It's a massive market. It's unorganized. But as people get richer, you want to buy brands, you want to buy quality products. So over a longer period, the big will become bigger. So established brands will become bigger. And of course, other element is many of these businesses are very profitable. They are family owned. But now families are realizing the real wealth is the market cap of companies and not just the profit you make. So, right. and second generation is coming. They are planning to take companies public, hire professionals. So, the DNA of companies are changing. And that's a good thing for the country. And many of yeah. these companies, by the way, are also going, they're exporting a lot. Oh, okay. Good. The next one thing is, now, generally, whomever, whenever I see, you know, I, I myself, I'm a very optimistic person. But whenever I see people, you know, people like you are the CEO, CEOs, investment managers, fund managers, everyone. And in general, people believe that there will be abnormal growth in the Indian economy in the next five to 10 years, or even let us take a decade, in the next 10 years. Now, what is your view or your funders' view on that? See, uh, if you remember, you know, the 2003 to 8, 9, 10 cycle, our GDP grew over 8, 9%. In fact, our reported numbers were there, but probably the growth was higher. When you look at the earning growth of corporates right over that cycle, right? I think earning growth was north of 20% CAGR over those years. So, and we have been building the base in the last few years. Let me talk about, see, in the 2003-9 cycle, no, we invested a lot of money in infrastructure. You know, the golden quadrilateral started, investment in ports started, new airports started, we used to have a massive power shortage, you know, power cuts, and some of those in massive power investments followed. Now we are back into that capex cycle, and we're seeing massive infrastructure investments. You know, today I think twenty-five cities in India are building metro network at the same time. You know, at the same time, it is amazing. You know, uh, just uh, a few months back in Bombay, we inaugurated a twenty-two kilometer bridge over the sea you know, Atal Setu, and that was built in record time, even during the COVID. Now, Mumbai is building multiple lines of metro at the same time, you know. So, we are going through a massive investment cycle, you know, as a country. And that will unleash productivity into the economy. When I mean one on the infra side, one on the tech infra side, which is basically all your Aadhaar, UPI stack. And by the way, UPI has been so successful that a lot of countries want to you know, learn from us and copy this, you know, this whole, art, you know, payments architecture. So suddenly India started building stuff. See, I think, let us understand this. We, because Indians has a huge focus on education, uh, you know, and for every parent, the most important thing in India is the education of their children, right? Okay. So we have invested so much in education for the first 25 years because we didn't have money. The Indian engineers build for the world. And that's why we created this globally competitive IT services industry. Right Now we're deploying some of the technology capabilities within the country. And I think if we continue to do that, we will leapfrog. We will jump generations. For example, most countries go through a lot of landlines and then they go to mobile. India had some landlines and then we went to mobile. <laughs> so we are going to leapfrog. So I am very optimistic that our growth rate should pick up. Of course, global growth also has to be supportive. We are not an island, you know, in the sense we all have to work together as a world. But with all the investments that have gone into it, right? And uh, the government also has done a lot of work. So all that, you know, it is like you're building a base. You know, uh, you know it's like uh, how compounding works mm -hmm. in a portfolio. When, when people start investing for the first five years, they think they don't think that portfolio has grown a lot. 10 years, they realize the portfolio has done well. In 15 years, they're shocked 
at how much well the portfolio has done. So we are going through that cycle, but somewhere we get that, you know, air, aircraft takeoff. You know, the plane is first running on the runway, it's picking up speed, and then it takes off. So hopefully we are in that stage where the economy takes off. So you are also on the same view and you are also optimistic. Now, uh, now that, that leads me to another question. You know, if, if, since we are all agreeing that the economy will do good, hence the market will be doing good on a longer term basis. Short term, anything can happen. So in that case, should aggressive investors, aggressive investors, I mean, who want more return, should they heavily invest equity funds, their surplus amount for the next, say, like next decade? See, one thing is very clear. Minimum investment horizons have to be five years in equities. One, you're talking of decades, sir, but I'm pleasing. It has to be at least five years. Five right? years, yeah. Yes. In that, uh, I think the best products is a flexi-cap fund because it gives you the opportunity to participate in large, mid, and small, right? Uh, I would not advise aggressive investment currently in small cap or mid cap funds. The right way to invest today is SIP. And if you get a correction opportunity, right, then you can go in more with this money. That is what I would say. Okay, 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 sure. And in some of your funds, you know, weight of funds, particularly, let me take mid cap funds. So you are not accepting any bulk investment. You are, you know, yeah, I think even from the start, from day one, probably you are accepting, except for that NFO period, you are accepting only, you know, the uh, SIP, the systematic, uh, either SCP or SAP, if I am right. Those are the two investment options that you are having. Why is it so? Oh, sir, uh, the mid cap, small cap categories uh, tend to be very volatile. You know, uh, of course, the last 12 months have been phenomenal for those categories. But if you take a longer term view, they're extremely volatile. Now, White Oak is a nascent brand in India. See, we are, the group is managing 65,000 crores in equity assets. So we're very established globally. But in the mutual fund, as you said, we're only 20 months old. We are building a nascent brand. We want to make sure our investors have a great experience with us. You know, and they invest in a volatile, see, where volatility is high, SIP is the right product. Where volatility is low, you can actually go lump sum. So for example, a BAF like product, balance advantage fund, people can invest lump sum because the volatility is low. But mid cap and small cap, because the volatility is high, the best way to invest is through a SIP. So we wanted to make sure over a long period, investors have a great experience with our products. And, we, the, and SIP is the right way to invest. And if people have great invest experience with our products, that's a win-win for the investor. That's a win-win for the partners. And that's finally great for our business. We are here to see investing is not T20. It's playing a series of test matches. It doesn't matter if you didn't score in the first session of a test match. It does not matter. It does not matter if you didn't score uh, much in the first. It's important. The best way to win a test match is not to get out in five days. Let the other team get out, right? Yeah. So that's what we're trying to play a long-term game, create, you know, you know, great customer experience. And when we do that, uh, I think it's a win-win for everyone. Okay, okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. And, you know, say like uh, nowadays, I think if I'm right, there are upwards of 40 mutual fund houses in India. So everyone has their own style, own way of investment. Of course, on a macro level, investment seems to be simple, but people follow different strategies, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So from White House, White House uh, Fund House point of view, how are you different from you know, other players in the sense? Or how do you approach the investment differently? So, see, sir, I think, uh, you know, for any organization or a team to do well it's a function of your culture culture fundamentally means what you want to be uh, so for white oak our aspiration is always to be the number one you know uh, this uh, there's a famous saying you don't win a silver you lose a gold you know don't win a silver medal you actually lose a gold so the way we want to play the game is to play you know, the aspiration is that over a market cycle, our funds have to be the best performing funds in the category. So we do 
four things differently in White Oak, what we call our investment culture, which is centered on these four pillars. First is the philosophy. At White Oak, we don't spend time on macro. Interest rates, currencies, commodities, uh, what the Indian government is doing, what Federal Reserve is doing, what Russia is doing, what America is doing, China, we don't spend time on this. What is gold is doing? We are focused on great companies and entrepreneurs and investing with them at the right price. So we are investors in business at the right price. That is our, that's how we approach investing. And to do that work in India, a large country like India with thousands of companies, you need deep investment and research. So we have a 33 member team, research team, which is comparable to the top three AMCs in India in terms of investment and research. Oh, okay. You know, the 12 senior people have 19 years plus experience. Uh, clearly one of the best resource team. And one thing I'm very proud of our team is, see one of, I'm a, a I'm, I'm, I'm a Mumbai car. So naturally my favorite IPL team is Mumbai Indians. Mm -hmm. But the second favorite team is CSK, right? Right. And, and there's a reason why CSK has done very well over a long time. Till recently, only one captain. <laughs> Since inception. Right. Right. And you know, even today, who's practically the captain, right? <laughs> and an extremely stable team. Uh -huh. CSK plays with the same team for a long period. Right. Very so nice. stable teams are very important. So one of the proud aspects I have is it's been close to seven years for White Oak Group. We okay. have not lost a single team member to competition in India in the last seven years. A stable team. And number three, I, I really care about is one of the things we believe is our own people should believe in our products, right? So uh -huh. for me personally, 100% of my personal exposure to the Indian market is only through the products of White Oak. And this applies to our team. All my money is in White Oak's products. That is the commitment. It is not skin in the game. It is mind, body, and soul in the game. And finally, the third pillar is process. Do thousands of meetings a year, talking to companies, competition, customers, vendors, trade partners, spend time on the ground. I have visited Chennai many times to just visit one small cap company whole day. Just to give you context, Tamil Nadu, I visited many times just to visit one small company for the whole day. It's being on the ground research, understanding businesses, entrepreneurs, DA, DNA. And finally, I think the important thing, any great team, it's not that you win a cup. It's the consistency of performance that matters. True. So the greatest cricket team in world cricket has been Australia. Because not that they won more trophies, they've been very consistent. IPL while we share the number of trophies with the CSK team, CSK is a better team because, because CSK is more consistent than Mumbai Indians. So our ambition in White Oak is over a longer period, we want to be the best, but we also want to deliver consistent performance. Have a portfolio approach that does not mean that you hit one century in one match and go duck in the second match. It's better to consistently score a 40 or 60 and end up with an average of 50 rather than hitting a century in one match and getting duck in the second match. Yes. So this is what so we are. That matters, that matters. Because if there is huge volatility in the fund performance, then uh, you know, investors also lose confidence. You know, yes, so actually, it's less understood. People think of investing is at the end of 10 years, I'll get second return, which is destination. So if you're going to a great destination, if the road is bad, no, you will not end up with a destination. So the journey also matters a lot. And that is why consistency of performance is clearly our focus. And the next question is more specific to your fund house. You have a bouquet of funds, you know, flexi cap, large and mid cap, mid cap, ELSS, all those. So currently, if I have to ask you, uh, you know, where, which fund would you pick or recommend to investors for bulk investment? See, as of now in the market, for bulk investments, I would recommend large and large and mid-cap funds. These are the two categories. 
uh, as large and mid, these are the categories that I would recommend. Uh, mid cap strictly on SIP only, right? If you have a little uh, aggressive stance you want to take, a little more aggressive, flexi cap is fine, but have a longer horizon. And if you're worried about elections and what happens in the short term, you can start with a balance advantage fund and then switch to post election, switch to another fund. Okay. And you can do SIP from a balance advantage fund, STP, to a more aggressive fund. Okay. The important thing is to invest. Way to invest is a secondary election. Yeah. <laughs> See, it, it is like you, you have to participate in the growth story of India. See, if you're giving money to a bank deposit or even investing in a fixed income product, that money finally goes to the entrepreneur through the banks or the insurance companies. In a country which is growing at 7%, a good portion of the money, let it go to the entrepreneur directly rather than going through the bank. And then going at a loan. Yes. Because in a loan, you are only going to get 6-7% and you are going to make, make full tax on that. Correct. Correct. Right? Correct. So please participate a portion of your portfolio directly with the growth story of India. Good. Well taken. One more thing, you know, particularly in the South, people are very much fond of gold. You know, more than not. I mean, Indians anyway are you know fond of gold, but South part of India, people are more fond of it. You know, they, they do have more affection towards gold and particularly 22 carats, you know, jewelry, etc. etc. So Already the gold prices are on a fire, you know, on fire already. Uh, earlier it was due to inflation, now due to international things. I mean, will it go up further? Where do we expect? Because some people are thinking that I have missed the bus. So should I board the bus right now? So even NRIs, NRIs are, you know, interested in buying gold in India. So uh, what is your outlook? Or, uh, although I, I think you, your fund house does not have a gold product, if I am right, but anyway, I want to ask this question for our subscribers. No, first of all, I'm sir, I'm not an expert on gold, you know, very clearly. Other thing, of course, is Indians globally are the highest overweight in gold in their portfolio than anywhere in the world. And everybody is always buying gold in India. Uh, we, of course, buy more in marriages, but then also, you know, we have a lot of events in our family where we buy gold for some other reason, including on sure. festivals. So gold is like, actually, we do SIP in gold every year. Sometimes bulk in marriage and SIP happens every year in gold. So here, everybody anyway is investing in gold. And, and, and I would not, I'm not saying don't do that. You know, I'm not suggesting don't do that. The other thing, all I want to say is we are already significantly overweight gold, you know. And uh, if you take even a very long-term view, even the, while gold has done very well off late, over long period, even a Sensex or Nifty has done much better than gold. And number two is if you add then the fund returns, the returns have been still better than that, right? You know, over the index also. The, there are two, three advantage of something like an equity asset classes. It is the best taxation in the country. Yeah. Secondly, it is T plus one. In, in two days, the money is in your bank account. When you sell gold, no, you lose five to 7% value of gold. Number three, there is no security aspect of worrying about the security of this asset, the equity mutual funds. So from that aspect, it's a great financial product to invest in equities. Uh, I would, I'm, please note, I'm not recommending Angist Gold. You're already, all of you are already investing in gold directly and indirectly. You have, and, and, and to keep your spouse happy, please give, keep, keep, keep gifting them gold. Right, <laughs> right, uh, right. Uh, please do that. So I'm not, uh, you know, we are all doing that. For NRIs, I would say the best, smarter thing is to invest in gold outside India. Uh, because, uh, you know, uh, it's simple that, uh, uh, you know, in India, you have a lot of import duties and all, right? So the, the thing is, you can just invest in gold outside India. In India, please bring your money into India to invest in the productive, expanding the productive capacity of the Indian economy through investing in equities. That's right. how please bring your money. That sure. money you can keep outside. Oh, you, you asked a very interesting question on White Oak. Interestingly, we have a product. We have a multi-asset fund where currently we have 21% gold in that portfolio. Oh, right. okay. Okay. 
and, and that product has done exceedingly well. We actually designed this product as a, a low volatility product, very low volatility product. Uh, with gives fo the focus is on absolute return, mm -hmm. and if you invest for just three year basis, mm -hmm. you get the debt taxation, the debt debt indexation benefit. Or oh, debt taxation. Okay. Debt, debt, on a three year basis. Okay. So it's it's a it's a very low volatility product, you know, design in a way, and uh, and and uh, we we launched this product. It's very it's actually new in the MF category, by the way. It's a it's a it's a very different product in the category. I would urge you to look at it. It's very good for people who can tolerate a little bit of volatility, but want better returns, not equity or balance advantage fund, right? And at the same time, want to benefit from the three-year debt indexation taxation that is still available. So it's a very interesting product that we have. Yes, okay. I think I'm done with my questions, Ramesh. Before getting into the you know, subscribers, they might have some questions. And well, I want to finish. If you want to share my your you know hobbies or you know like dislike, what do you do in your free time? How do you manage all those things? Because people also want to draw. You know, there could be viewers even later, even after our conversation. This will be on the YouTube. People want to know about okay, how do you manage stress or what do you do? You know, how people want to know other slides. You know, yeah. <laughs> no, no, Thank so you. what do you do? So I think one thing you would have realized from all this conversation that I love cricket, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. So uh, that's the only sport nowadays I'm able to follow. I don't find so much time. I used to love to watch test cricket earlier, right? But of course now, you know, I don't find so much time to watch test cricket. Incidentally, I saw the recent test series. I like to watch when India is winning, <laughs> right? Okay. So I watched this time when we thrashed England very well. Uh, I love to read. You know, uh, you know, reading is something uh, that I love to do. Uh, you know, I'm blessed with two boys. So right. one of the easiest way for me to distress is to just play games with them, board games. We love to play board games, you know, two boys. So I, I play games with them. And another thing is uh, I've been lucky in my life to have worked in every part of the country. I've seen every part of India. So I, I am in love with every part of the country, including Northeast, because I've stayed in Northeast also. Wow. I, I love to travel, experience the culture, the food, uh, you know, and can appreciate the beauty of culture, dance of every part of India. Very good. You are a true Indian, I should say. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes uh, so, for example, I like, like to attend Carnatic music concerts. Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> then you should be here during December, huh? Jan <laughs> December, January, November, December, January. Period. That is good. To visit all the sabas. Anyway, that's good. Uh, probably let us see what questions we have got. Just uh, give me a second. There is one question from Selvaraju C. Uh, he is asking which industry or top five sectors can be specifically mentioned in another two to five years, any particular industry or sector, that's what he is asking. Great. Uh, so, see, when you think about large sectors out of India, what is likely to do well on a three to five years is, one is banking and financial sector. This is currently not favor, not, markets don't like this, this is out of favor. But, uh, you know, the underlying companies are doing exceedingly well. You know, our banks, whether P private banks or PSU banks are in solid shape. Uh, you know, the financial services industry, including capital markets and all is booming. Insurance is doing well. So there's a huge growth potential in this sector. The sector valuations are very attractive. So if you're looking to invest, this is one sector among the large sectors that will do well. Number two, one sector where valuations are even today reasonable and it's a very critical sector is pharma and medical. See, okay. pharma and medical is more important than food because when you are sick, you don't like to eat also. First, you need <laughs> medicine before you can eat food. Yeah. So this is again one sector where India is globally competitive. We have a large market, large growth story and uh, people are going to live longer. They want quality medical care 
and with the penetration of insurance, you know, that this sector will only grow a lot. Again, and again, it's a very defensive sector. Whenever the markets do badly, pharma healthcare actually sector does exceedingly well. You know. Uh, now, in terms of smaller sectors, uh, there is, I think, if India has to go from four trillion to five, we will get very quickly. You know, because now we are that momentum is there. If you have to go from five to ten and then higher. One industry that we have to create is manufacturing. We have to get manufacturing back in India at scale. The early signs are already there. By the way, Chennai cluster, and, and you know, when I mean Shri City and all that area is already emerging as a manufacturing cluster for you know automobiles, engineering, electronics manufacturing. But we need to do it at much larger scale. We as a country have to become, apart from the back office of the world and the IT support center of the world, also have to become the factory to the world. So that's one sector where we have opportunity, clearly. Good, good. And uh, from my side, is, do you think this infrastructure is overvalued right now or is it a good investment right now? See, infrastructure is one, you know, see infrastructure, there are many ways to invest in infrastructure. First of all, you can invest in the companies that are building infrastructure, which is ports, airports, highways, power transmission lines. Uh, I would say power is also part of infrastructure. Other ways to invest, uh, and these are very capital intensive businesses, also where a lot of government policy plays a role. So you don't know where government policy will end up many times, right? There is always uncertainty in government policy. But then there are equipment providers, right? You know, big companies who provide the machinery, the, the complex equipment, large engineering companies, they do exceedingly well. What is called the capital goods sector in India. That's another way to invest, in, participate in infrastructure. That's how we prefer to participate in infrastructure through capital goods. And another way is to invest through infrastructure financiers, you know, particularly in the power sector, you know, where there's going to be a massive capex cycle in India in power sector in the next decade. There's another way to invest. So you don't have to directly buy the people who are building those heavy assets. You can invest through capital goods companies. Okay. And anyway, Chennai and Tamil Nadu is a hub for engineering capital goods companies. Good, 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 good. Yeah. The question is, I mean, uh, if lump, lump sum investment is not advisable at this time, can we invest 15 lakhs split into the categories large, mid, the small, of a status and equity equity? I mean, he is asking, you know, if I uh, have like 15 lakh rupees right now, can I? Bifurcate into large, mid, and small, and invest that money and get SWP from it. That is the yes. So uh, normally, uh, you know, first of all, you should consult your advisor because the advisor knows your risk appetite and financial position. I am not the right person to give you a specific fund. You know, advice. You know, yeah. okay. normally instead of investing through large, mid, and small, you can actually buy just one flexi cap fund. Very okay. simple. Yeah. And normally for SWP, unless the SWP horizon is very long, the typical best product for SWP is actually a balance advantage fund. You know, BAF, okay. BAF is the best product for a SWP point of view if you think you need regular in income, right? So that there won't be a big drawdown in case market goes down. Yeah. But your but please consult a you know an advisor. Okay. Good. 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 Then now comes uh is good time to invest since there are a lot of uncertainty about the Ukraine conflict. He's asking, is it good time since there is a lot of uh, you know conflict in in the Middle East? Uh, yeah. So uh, let me tell you. See, uh, when when I when I I got some understanding, the Iran Iraq conflict was on. Then the Gulf War started. Then the Afghanistan War started. I'm just talking only in this region. Right, uh, mid-Palestine mid Israel conflict has been there actually since 1947. In fact, it is older because they were, they were in fighting for thousands of years. 
I think now the conflict has been significantly uh, curtailed, right? There is always going to be uncertainty. The thing is that the things that you worry today don't actually impact markets. Market will actually get impacted by things that none of us are aware of, right? Did we predict the Ukraine war? Did we predict the Israel war when before it happened? Very few of us, hardly anyone. So you should not worry. If you get and if you have and if you're getting worried, please do SIP. So some Andrew is liking your analogy with cricket and all those things. So <laughs> he has liked it very much. Okay. And one of the question is, uh, I am 65 now and I need a best SWC for my retirement. What you would answer my question? I am in Gulf now. He is in a Gulf country right now. But, uh, he is asking for, uh, he is around 65 and uh, best SWC for my Retirement. See, uh, I the the as best you should invest in S, for SWP option. The best funds are always balance advantage funds, right. right? Balance advantage fund. Again, it's a function of your risk appetite and horizon of SWP. So you should consult your proper financial advisor on this. One thing I want to say on this call very categorically: people think the mistake of doing investing on their own. Few people have their own capability to do it or the time or the resources or the expertise. See, you, when you have a temperature, a little bit of temperature, you may take a crossing. But once it starts getting a little worse, you have to go to a doctor. Mm. Legal case, you have to go to a lawyer. People need an architect for their home. Please get a advisor, a competent advisor. That's the most important thing you need to do as part of your financial planning. Okay. Let that person... Spend a lot of time identifying the right doctor, the right lawyer, the right, right financial advisor, and then follow their advice. Please don't DIY for minor problems is okay. For major things, something like your retirement is usually not a great idea. So please, the most important thing of your financial journey is to you know, please get a competent financial advisor for you. One more question. Suggest some good books for related to wealth management. Good books on wealth management. Did you read something? Yes. Can... So I would recommend two books. Uh, and the first book is called The Richest Man in Babylon. You know, my son is 10 years old. I gave this book to read. I actually offered him some treat that if he reads the book. Luckily for him, he liked the book that he didn't ask me the treat. He said the book itself was the treat. So Please read yourself the book and get your children to read the book. It's called The Richest Man in Babylon. It's a very simple, small, short book. The best book about money is the book called The Psychology of Money by Morgan Hauser. Again, a very simple book. I'm sure it is also available in a local language. I'm sure there'll be a, a Tamil version, a Kannada version, a Telugu version, a Malayalam version of this book. And... It, in fact, audio versions of the books are also available. If you don't like to read a book, when you are walking or going in public transport, you can hear the book. Okay. Right? So you don't have to read a book if you don't like a read. I mean, nowadays, we have something called audio books. Right? Where you can listen the book you know, on your journeys. Right? Of course, don't, don't listen when you are driving a car or vehicle. Right, but if you are a passenger or tra traveling public transport or or your e morning walk or evening walk, listen to the book. It will be immensely helpful. I can tell you, getting your finances right is among the three most important decisions you take. You know, in your life, three most important decisions you take in your life. So please make sure you make your own effort to get it right. Good, good, good. Okay, I think there's one more question. We will be done with that. Uh, there are two more questions. So, the inverse as much as possible now before the RBA reduces the interest rate, so we can reap the gains of interest reduction. Uh, see, first of all, uh, I want to be very categorical. I, I or nobody else can predict interest rates. 
last seven, eight months, the world has been trying to predict Federal Reserve interest rate, US interest rates, and they've got it wrong twice completely. So if the world can't, get, the Americans can't get the American interest rates right, the you know, what is the chance we can get something in RBI? So don't think about interest rate cuts and all, right? These, these Because of this, you're actually holding back your investment decisions. They never add too much value. I can tell you. The important thing is please start investing. If you're worried a little bit, spread the money over the next six months, right? Or do SIP. But please start the process of investing. This is the last question. And I'm 38 years old. If we want to create startups of home store in 10 years, as beginning start market, what would be the investment plan? Okay. So if you want to probably we will answer this uh, the quantitative numbers. And the first thing tomorrow, I will put it in the you know, reply description box. If you want to, in the next 10 years, you want to create a corpus of one crore. So he, he may have to invest like 50 lakhs, approximately, you know, annually 5 lakhs. So through annually 5 lakhs, he has to invest and uh, so that he can get you know, one crore at the end of 10 years with 12% rate of return. So that is the thing. And uh, Ramesh, it was wonderful uh, discussing with you. Last time you were here in our office for cake cutting for crossing a 700 crores. Uh, for, uh, luckily, we have crossed 800 crores now. <laughs> Probably when you are... Sir, I'm waiting for you to get to four digit numbers and come again. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Definitely. So next time when I talk to you, you should be talking of four digit numbers. <laughs> and that, this is a matter of time now, just a yeah, matter yeah. of time. Sure, sure. Thank you very much. And uh, probably when you are here uh, in Chennai next time, please do drop by your office. And it is uh, great conversing with you. And definitely, you know, a lot of people, you know, might have the, you know, got insights at this point of time and there's a lot of uncertainty going on. Just the, there's a process that we keep on doing just to you know, keep insisting the point, the importance of investing and the people like you who have lost experience in the field. That is the intention of this program. Anyway, thank you so much. I appreciate, you know, your participation today. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank have you. a nice day, everyone. Thank, thank you. you.